Good to be here with you. Amen. Uh, we have been studying uh, over the last few weeks, and I've been using this as our subject or our thought, guiding thought, of uh, preparing for Christmas. And again, my feeling, my point of view is that uh, it's easy for us to, to lose the true meaning of Christmas. We can get caught up in a lot of other things. And so one of the things that Advent, that word we looked at before, one of the things that Advent does is help us prepare our minds for the true celebration of Christmas. And we do that by jumping back into the Word of God and seeing what the Word of God says about His Son being born into the earth, on, on the earth, and coming to save us from our sins. So that's what we've been doing for the past couple of weeks. And if you look at your left-hand side of your handout, program, bulletin, whatever your favorite term is, uh, I've, got, I've got about five sort of uh, uh, reminders, reviews that I want to go through. And today, I want to talk about peace. I want to talk about peace. And the verse that I want to use that you have heard, uh, especially on Christmas cards, and every year you hear this verse somewhere. And that verse is from Isaiah chapter 9, verse number 6. It says, For us a child is born, to us a son is given. The government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, mm -hmm. Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. So I want to talk about that last name that he is given. He has many names, and his name is Jesus. His name is Emmanuel, God with us. But in this passage, he is the Prince of Peace. And so that's what I want to talk about today. But before we get there, let's kind of build back up. Let's do a little bit of review and add a few more things, and then we'll be at that place where we can talk about peace today. So the first one says, we learned last week that Adam sinned in the garden. Remember that? And when Adam sinned in the garden, sin passed, we read in Romans, that sin passed to all men. <coughs> It says, and this is the one that I want you to get really, really clearly. I know you know it, but this is the one that I want you to hear very clearly. Because of Adam's sin, we inherited a sin nature, and that sin separated us from God. Amen. That sin, what did we learn last week? All have sinned and have fallen short, and that sin separated us from God. Have you ever been separated? Maybe in, from a relationship. Maybe you... Yes, I have. Amen. Thank you. Somebody. I'm... Because uh, uh, back in the country where we came from, uh, if you had a friend that said, me and, me and Chris, we're just like this. I don't know signs. I might be... <laughs> Me and Chris, just like this. God and Adam were just like this. Until he sinned. Remember, God brought all the animals to Adam and said, give them names. He said, I, I, I want you to be the one that tends this garden. I want you to be fruitful and I want you to multiply. So God and Adam were just like this. But when Adam and Eve sinned, it separated the two. Yes. You ever had a good friend and you got separated over something? Yes. Come on. Amen. Does anybody in here had a, a special relationship with, with uh, your honey and then something happened and y'all? Yeah. Amen. Y'all used to be all kissy face and now y'all mad and mean and... Now, come on, man. I'm trying yes, to make a point. Yes, yes. So, when Adam sinned, it separated him from his relationship with God. Mm -hmm. And because we inherited his sin nature, we were separated from God. Yes, yes. That's 
Amen. You got to agree with that point. We were separated with, from God. Look at the second point. In our sinful state, and this is a heavy word, it says we became enemies of God. Jesus said, if, if you're not with me, you are against me. Mm -hmm. So look at the Romans uh, chapter uh, 5, verse 10. It says, for if while we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? So we were enemies of God. I know somebody say, but 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 Pastor, uh, I've always been a good person. This is not about you being a good person. This is about what you inherited from your great great grandfather Adam. You inherit the sin nature, and that means that you are, if you have not accepted His free gift of Jesus Christ, you are now sitting here separated from God. Amen. I love you enough to tell you that. You are separated from God. So look at it. number two. Our sinful state, we are enemies with God at Romans 5.10. But look at uh, Romans 5.8. But God demonstrated his own love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ did what? Died, died for us. And so I have trouble when people say, uh, what do I need to do? Well, well you got to clean yourself up. you got to do all this stuff. No, while we were still in our sin, God sent his son to die for us. He didn't say get cleaned up, get your right life together. He said come just like you are. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. 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 While we were still sinners, while I was still doing my thing, Amen. while I had my platform shoes on and my afro, and my angel flight. Somebody help me. Right. He died for me. Yes, yes. Some of y'all don't know nothing about that. You're too young, but some of you will get it. Amen. Number three says, God sent his only begotten son into the world. And I want you to underline this. This is an important point that I want you to get. That he died for us as us. Yes. 2 Corinthians 5 says, He who knew no sin became sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Yes, yes. Anybody ever watch a, a, a courtroom show? Anybody like Bull? Yes. Perry Mason? Yes. All those, a Madlock, all those courtroom shows? Imagine for a second that you're in the courtroom yes. and the prosecutor rises, and I'm using my name, he says, Honor, Your Honor, we have proven beyond a shadow of a doubt that Ron Jackson is a sinner. And the Word of God declares that the wages of sin is death, so yes. he is guilty of death. And someone stands up in the courtroom and says, I will die for him. And the stenographer I have a friend that's a stenographer. She's there. So Jesus died for me as me. Because when you go to the official records and they look up my court case and they said the, 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 the verdict was that he was guilty mm -hmm. but, but he fulfilled the guilty verdict by death. It wasn't his death, but it was the death of, death of his Savior that satisfied the courts. Yes. So as far as the courts records are concerned, Ron Jackson is dead. Mm. Mm -hmm. You'll get excited about that maybe on the way home. <laughs> Just imagine if you were at court. Some of you have been in court, right? And somebody stood up and said, hey, I'll pay the fine. I'll do the jail time. And you would just, just dismiss it and go, oh, is that how you would feel? Or would you be elated yes. that yes. someone would die for you? Yes, yes. Someone would give their life, give up their freedom, give up their money for you. Yes. That's what Jesus did. He died for us as us. And number four said, God sent his son to reconcile us. What does 
that mean? That, that means that when two parties are at odds, like we said, there are those, we, we are enemies now of God, usually you have a mediator, yeah. right? Yeah. You, you, or you go to a counselor, or you go to someone respect and say, hey, we got this stuff we can't work out. Could you help us work it out? And you sit down and you talk about it and you make uh, compromises and you say, hey, we got that thing fixed up. Yes. That's what Jesus did. The Bible says that Jesus is our mediator. Yes. Yes. There is one man between God and man. He is the man Christ Jesus. And so he took God's hand and he took our hands and he yes. brought us back together. He reconciled our differences. Remember back in the day when there was, uh, when there, you had to show why you were getting divorced? And one of the defenses was irreconcilable differences. We can never get back together. We can't fix our problems. But when Jesus came, the, 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 the fact that we were enemies, we were enemies no more because he made a way for us to get yes, back. Yes, yes. In re, somebody say a relationship with the Father that was lost when Adam sinned. So he sent his son to reconcile us. Number five says, because of Christ's birth, his death and his resurrection, I would underline this word, we are restored to a relationship, and there's that word, word. we are restored to a relationship of peace with God. Look at Romans 5.1 at the very top of the page. It says, therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Those of who have been justified by faith. Now, justified is a big word, and there are many facets to it. You can get really deep in it. But one of the ways that I, was, I learned to kind of get a, 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 a easy, kind of an easy understanding of the word justification. And it is just as if we had not sinned. Just as if we had not sinned. So when that enemy we had, the differences we had, Jesus came and wiped all that away. And now it is just as we had not ever I'm glad about that. I'm glad about that. So let me read again. For us, for to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and we and he will be called wonderful counselor, mighty God. Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Let's talk about peace. Look on your right hand side. It says the Hebrew word for peace is shalom. You ever heard people say that? Shalom. Shalom is often used in reference to, to calm and tranquility of individuals, groups, and nations. So if we're all getting along, we could easily say we are in a, in a spirit of shalom. We're in a, in a spirit of peace because we are calm and, and we are tranquil. Uh, there's no animosity, all that stuff between us. We're, we're in, a, in a spirit of peace. It can also mean wholeness. Wholeness of body, like in your health. A wholeness of mind. Uh, shalom can also mean prosperity or success, or fulfillment. Another definition of shalom is victory over one's enemies, or the absence of war. And most often in political circles, that's what we use, peace. Like we won't have peace between us and another country, or peace in another group of people. So we use this term uh, of peace, or shalom. And then if you are uh, if you are a Jewish person, 
uh, or, and you were giving someone else a blessing, you would use the term shalom, and it would mean, may your life be filled with health, prosperity, and victory. So that sense of, may you have this calm, may you have this tranquility, that's what we're talking about when we talk about peace. But look at the third point that I put on the page. But the deep, more foundational meaning of peace, underline this word, is the spiritual harmony brought about by individuals' restoration with God. Now, that's a fancy word sentence there. <laughs> Write this down beside that sen sen uh, sentence. When you get it right with God. Simple. When you get it right, that's what peace is. When you get your relationship right, right with God, that's a, a relationship of peace. You have, your, you have spiritual harmony with the one who created you. Because we learned just a few minutes ago, when Adam sinned, it separated us from God. We were no longer in harmony with God. But when you accept his son, you are brought back into a relationship of peace, a relationship of spiritual harmony with your father. That last sentence says, this is the deep abiding peace between our hearts and our creator. Underline, this is the ultimate fulfillment of Christ's work as Prince of Peace. He came to bring us back into relationship with the Father. Here's, my, here's, here's all of this. This is what we celebrate at this time of the year. That he, remember, uh, even, even uh, uh, J.C. Penny, J.C. Penny, J.C. Penny says, I wish you joy, comfort, and peace. Amen. 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 That's, there's a commercial. We're yeah. watching it. They're, they're, they're singing and decorating trees. I wish you joy, comfort, and peace. That's right. Even the world desires. Amen. Amen. And we that believe in the Son, we have joy, yes, we do. comfort, and peace through the work of Jesus Christ. Amen. And I, I tease my wife all the time. She goes, uh, what do you want for Christmas? I go, peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> Because if I don't have a turkey, I still have joy, yes. comfort, and peace. Because he purchased the peace for me on the cross. Yes. And I want to say it to you. I don't have it in my notes, but I didn't put it in your notes. The joy, the comfort, and the peace that Jesus gives us is not dependent upon our externals. That's it. That's it. Yes, Lord. All hell could be broken out around yes, you, but you can Lord. still have peace in here. Yes, Lord. Yes. 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 Mm. Surely Caesar said, this joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me, it. and the world can't take it away. This peace that I have, the world didn't give it to me, and the world can't take it away. It didn't come out of a needle. It didn't come out of a pipe. It didn't come out of a bottle. And his name was Tiny. <laughs> yes, Lord. He's the Prince of Peace. It wasn't just some name somebody gave him. It, it, he is the Prince of Peace. Yes, he is. Not just by just because someone slapped a name on him. Mm -hmm. Because, but because that who that is who he yes. is. Come on. 
Look at number, look at the next one. Highlight, underscore, underline it. It says, and I want you to hear this. God alone is the source of peace. If you are here today and you're troubled, and I know a lot of people here, we all have trouble. And you're, you're looking for peace. There's only one place you can find it. Yes, sir. I'm telling you. There's only one place. Ah. Yes, There's only one place that you can find peace. It says the Lord, He came to sinful man, desiring to enter into a relationship with Him. You didn't initiate the relationship because, and we we use this term. Don and I know this. Uh, so what year did you find the Lord, or when did you find the Lord? The Lord wasn't lost. That's right. Amen. <laughs> he wasn't lost. You were lost. That's it. And he initiated the relationship by sending his son. And look at another next line. Those who enter into relationship with him, I would underline this. He, he gives them, watch this, perfect peace. Perfect peace. There's some there, there, there's some stuff that you can take that make you feel mellow. Yeah. <laughs> but that's not a perfect peace. Okay. <laughs> that's not a this is a perfect peace. Yeah. Look at the next one. In the world, filled with war and violence and all this stuff going on politically, all those things going on uh, with equality and uh, racial tension, and you say, how could you stand up there and talk about Jesus being a prince of peace? In my world, in my community, in this world, I don't see that. Yes, yes. But the peace that I'm offering you through Christ, again, it's not a peace that, that's based on externals. Look what it says, but physical safety and political harmony don't necessarily reflect the kind of peace he's offering. Now, and this is the same situation that Israel was in. Israel at this time, they were under Roman rule. And they were looking for a Messiah. Mm -hmm. But they wanted the, the Messiah to come and take away the Roman rule. Mm -hmm. To take away the, the oppression that they were under. And many of us, when we think of peace, we say, well, the, the, if the Prince of Peace comes, he needs to fix, you know, Iran, Iraq, and all those things where we have war. But there's a different kind of peace that he's offering you. That's right. I, I wrestle, and Donna and I, we talk sometimes, we wrestle with what's going on politically and socially in our, in our world. But you know what? I cannot fix any of it. Okay. If every single one of us in here had God's peace, Amen. communities could change, families Amen. could change. Amen. We may not change the world. Have you had this turn? I'm drinking from the saucer. Because my cup is overflowing. Yes. If you have peace, here's a here's a word. Uh, oh man. We can share peace with others. In fact, in Romans chapter 2 Corinthians, it says that we are become ambassadors. Yes, yes, yes. We, we are to bring people closer to God. We are to share our peace and our joy with them. But you can't have it. You can't share it if you don't have it. That's right. Let me finish with this. So I'm getting off on a, a rabbit trail here. Peace is not the absence of trouble. That's it. But trees, peace is the presence of God. Amen. So if God is present in your life, you can have peace. Let me give you these last three. This is the peace that Jesus offers us. First of all, he offers us peace with God. Amen. 
-hmm. Remember, we were enemies of God. He came so we could be reconciled again with God. So he is offering us peace with God. The second thing is he is offering us peace with others. In Romans chapter 12, verse 18, it says, I'm, I am paraphrasing, as much as lies within you, yes. live at peace with all men. As much as it depends on you, live at peace with all people. Now, some, sometimes you do all you can do to be at peace with others and it still don't work. Mm -hmm. But as much as you can do, yes. live at peace. So when you have the peace of God in you, you can be at peace with other people. Mm -hmm. I want to give you this example. I'm not going to say the word, but imagine someone comes up and call me, calls me a derogatory term. I can fight. I can get mad. I can do all that, right? But I have the peace of God. Anybody know what it means to not be at peace with yourself? Amen. Yes. Oh. Sure do. He's offering you peace with God. He's offering you peace with others. And you are. Scripture says, I will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on. Yes. Me. Yes. You can have peace. When you're tossing and turning at night in your bed, when, when, when you're agonizing over some mistakes that you made in the past, if you're agonizing over something that you're doing even right now, yes. a dependency, a relationship. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. He can give you peace. Yes, he can. Look at Philippians 4. It says, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by yes. prayer and petition with thanksgiving, yes. present your request to God and the peace of God mm. that transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Yes. He promised you a peace that nobody will even understand. Yes, Lord. Mm. Not to be anxious about anything. Listen to Jesus in John 14, 27. He says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. Yes. I do not give you as the world gives. Mm. Do not let your heart be troubled and do not be afraid. He said, I'm going to give you my peace. Yes, Ooh. yes. A peace that transcends all of our understanding. Mm. In the midst of what you're going through, they're going to say, honey, I don't even know how you have such peace about this. Yes, Lord. Mm. Thank you, Lord. He gives us peace with God, mm. peace with
peace with others. And you can have peace in your own heart today. Yes, thank you, Jesus. And that's what we celebrate. Mm. That's what I'm going to celebrate anyway. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Whether I have a Christmas tree or Christmas lights or Christmas presents or a stocking, I got peace. Amen. At my house. Ah! <laughs> With my wife for 48 years, Amen. I got have peace. So I want to give you a minute as we spend some time in prayer. And if you don't have that peace, if this is your first time hearing about it, understanding it, it says not to be anxious for anything, but through prayer. Through prayer, you can invite him to bring his peace into your heart today. And you can have peace with God, peace with others, 